I love a good trip to the nursery. I feel like a kid in a candy store. But what if you've only got a small space or a wall to work with? A vertical garden is a great option for maximising that space. Of course, vertical gardens can be massive, with complex watering systems that come with an eye-watering cost. But if you keep things simple, you can make your own. Firstly, it's really important to choose a sturdy frame. Wire mesh is a great option, but there's also the good old fashioned timber lattice. Whatever option you go with, make sure it's strong. Another frame option is a timber pallet. The shelves make fabulous planting pockets. It can be hard to know if the timber has been treated though, so it's wise to avoid pallets for vertical gardens that include edible foods. Today, I'm going with two pieces of timber lattice that I'm going to bind together. This is going to be helpful because once the plants are on there, and especially after they've been watered, it can get quite heavy. Next, choose your pots. Many pre-made vertical systems have tiny pots, which is fine for small plants, but they can limit your options and stunt the growth of some plants. I think it's best to try a variety of pot shapes and sizes. That way, you can use some you may already have at home. Basic plastic troughs and leftover plastic pots are all great lighter weight options. But they all need to be reasonably small because you want the plants to be the focus, not big pots. Another great lightweight option is a wire basket lined with coconut fibre. Look for one that's got a flat back and that'll make it easier to hang. Now it's time to start getting creative and choose your plants. Now this is the fun part. The best vertical gardens are lush with a creative and cohesive combination of colours, textures and forms. There can be so much to choose from and it can get a bit overwhelming. So today I'm going to keep things quite simple. It's great to decide on a theme and that's when it's really important to think about where you're putting your vertical garden. Will it be a sunny herb garden or have a shaded tropical feel? Think about the amount of light, warmth and wind exposure your vertical garden will get. It's a great idea to choose between three to five core plants with different textures. Something trailing, a little bushy and a strappy one too. Some excellent plants for a shady spot are Mondo, Bromeliad, Ferns, Dianella, and for a trailing plant, try Dichondra. For bold or bushy leaves, try Philodendrons or Coleus. And for a sunny spot, Society Garlic with its pretty lilac flowers is very popular. Carex is also another good hardy choice. Great trailing options are Creeping Fig or Ornamental Black Sweet Potato. And for bold foliage in a sunny location, try Santalina or Lamb's Ear. There are just so many possibilities. So to help you choose, we've put up a detailed list on our website. I've got a sunny spot in mind and I've decided to go with a simple edible vertical garden. So for my strappy plant, I've got spring onions. For my trading plant, I've got creeping rosemary. And for my bushy plant, I'm going with parsley. And for some edible pops of colour, I've got violas. Now, let's set it out. First, I'm going to use some garden wire to secure the frames together. Be sure you attach your frame securely so it doesn't topple over. I like to think of my frame as a grid, so don't be afraid to play with pot placement before hanging them up. Sit plants in pots to help you decide where they're best placed. Get strategic. Try creating straight or diagonal lines of the same plants or grouping them to highlight and contrast colour and texture. If pots are stacked on top of each other, this will restrict light and airflow. For best results, stagger them. I'm quite happy with that. Now it's time to get my hands dirty. When it comes to potting up, always use a premium potting mix that's suitable for your plant type. So if you're potting up cacti and succulents, use a cacti and succulent potting mix. In this case, I'm using a blend that's rich in organic matter and it's well draining too. So it's perfect for herbs and veggies. Now I'm gonna put my parsley in 
one at each end so they don't crowd each other out. So since it's sitting just a little bit too proud, I am going to remove some of the root ball. And don't worry, plants are quite resilient so it's not going to mind a bit of a shave. Now to backfill around the plants to make sure the roots are well covered. You don't want them drying out. And now to put it all together. Small pots in a sunny or exposed location mean they will need regular watering. Different plants will have different growth rates, so you can trim the quick growers to stop them from hindering the slow ones. It's coming along nicely. Don't expect your vertical garden to look lush and full immediately. These gaps will fill up over time as the plants grow. And you can always tweak it too. That's the beauty of a vertical garden.